This coronavirus, more seriously around the world, what is it, nearly a million people are dead, 940,000 at the moment. And the economic damage, well, the World Health Organization this week reckons the world has so far spent $11 trillion on this crisis. And most of that spending in the West was really being weakened compared to China. Now, most experts have been saying this virus came from animals, from bats in China, then some unknown animal, they're not sure, and then to humans. China's saying, meanwhile, well, we think it might have come from America, from some soldiers there. But now a virologist from China, who then studied the viruses in Hong Kong, various viruses, says, no, it did come from China and probably from a government laboratory. It comes from the lab, the lab in Wuhan. That's Dr Li Meng Yang. Now, she's fled China. She didn't feel safe saying this stuff. And with three colleagues, also with doctorates, she this week published a report concluding the natural origin theory for this virus, although widely accepted, lacks substantial support. This virus shows biological characteristics that are inconsistent with a naturally occurring zoonotic virus. In other words, it did not come from animals, not, not without some meddling. Is this true? Is this possible? Well, joining me is David Winkler. He's a chemistry and physics professor from La Trobe University. He's been doing exactly the same kind of research into this virus to find out where it's from. David Winkler, Professor Winkler, thank you so much for your time. Based on your own research and this latest new, uh, paper, do you think that this virus came from a lab? Well, our research um, does things in a bit of, bit of a different way. We're computational scientists, so we build mathematical models of how the virus interacts with human cells. And um, our work, which was published in a preprint survey just recently, shows that the affinity of the virus for human, the human protein is the highest of any species. We looked across a whole range of species, including the ones that people have proposed as being intermediate species for the virus, like pangolins and bats and snakes. But we find the human um, protein has the highest affinity, which is a bit unusual. So. One way that could happen is through um, passaging through cells in a in a laboratory, but it's probably not the only explanation. It was just a surprising finding. That is. So it's a really, it <coughs> loves to attack humans. Now, what would you say is the most likely possibility? You, you haven't ruled it in, you haven't ruled it out, or you, have, you haven't ruled it out, but what is the most likely possibility for it being like this? This is not my main area of research, but um, Professor Nick Petrovsky, who uh, runs the research group that I'm working with, is, uh, is a virologist and a molecular biologist, and he runs a vaccine company. He feels that what's proposed in um, the Li, um, Li Meng Yan paper is plausible, but it would be more convincing if someone actually went through the steps and actually constructed a virus the way they suggested. Um, there's a few things with that paper that would, I guess, put up amber flags, I guess. One is that it's a preprint and hasn't been peer reviewed. Yes. Secondly, uh, the rule of law society, it's affiliation. Normally when people publish work, it's with a university or a research lab affiliation. But this one's been affiliated with the rule of law society, which is a group set up in the US um, basically for, to help Chinese whistleblowers. Uh, I think it was set up by Steve Bannon, who was one of Trump's um, guys. Uh, and also the language is a little bit sort of over the top for a scientific paper. They're making assertions that possibly aren't necessarily supported by the evidence. Yes, I would not rule out <clears throat> that, of course, you, you know, we can't be blind to the fact that uh, if she's made a hero for making these claims, it helps her get uh, the, you know, residential status in a country like America. So we can't rule that out. But... Um, mm. Look, but the fact is, it, it does. Have, this virus is particularly keen on humans. Why would anyone be working on a virus like this in a lab? I think there's legitimate reasons to do that because when you think the last three pandemics we've had, with MERS, SARS, and now COVID, have all been coronaviruses. So I think it's legitimate. In fact, it's something we ought to be doing: is understanding how these viruses work, how we can how they have vulnerabilities, how we can develop, develop vaccines, how we can develop drugs, which is exactly what our group's doing. So we're prepared for the next pandemic, which will probably be a coronavirus as well. So I think these things need to be studied. 
um, but you have to be very careful how you do the study. There is a, a thing called a gain of function experiment you can do, viruses, which means gain of functions to them. Um, and that was actually outlawed some time ago because it's potentially dangerous. Um, so you can do a certain amount in the lab, but there's certain things maybe you shouldn't be doing and possibly, you know, if you are speculative, you might say maybe some of these things have been done. <clears throat> Well, Professor Winkler, you were encouraging very much uh, in your last answer until you got to the bit where you said there will be another coronavirus. Uh, please, please, not yet. This is just terrible enough. Professor David Winkler, thank you so much indeed for your time. Pleasure.